Electrive Studio, powered by EVBox. Hi and uh, welcome to the Electrive Studio, powered by EVBox. We are at a revolution event in Amsterdam and with me is Taco van Berke. He is the marketing manager of Jetlex, a company that basically sits in between the energy uh, market and the OEMs. They offer smart charging services. How does, how does your services look like for me? Good question. Um, well, for you and me as a driver and for everybody who can imagine driving a vehicle, um, such a service will ask you, okay, we see that your vehicle is at this harbor location at home and at your work. We actually expect you to leave rather uh, within eight hours or 12 hours. Do you agree that we charge your vehicle smartly? Which means we make sure your battery is full when you leave. Uh, but we can do it cheaper and let's say more environmental friendly. Uh, so there always is an opt-in for a user. And actually as a user you won't actually be, be asked nothing else than when do you leave? And we will see in the background and fully automate the fact that your car might be not immediately charged, but a little bit later on, and maybe in the future discharging is also within the features, or for sure, but I'm not sure when we do it commercially, we already do it in pilots. Um, but this is actually the only thing you will, uh, well, on a daily basis experience. Uh, and of course, every once in a while we tell you, well, good job, because we are managed to save you some money here. You can imagine heavy commuters for electric vehicles, for instance, in the Netherlands, uh, People get paid 10 to 15 euros if they have a big EV as kind of a reward that they offer flexibility of charging to the energy markets. For smaller, uh, smaller vehicles is less and if you drive less of course then it's less money. But people are really rewarded. So first of all you will share with the service, with your OEM because this is a service we offer to OEMs. Uh, when will you leave? Uh, there's some onboarding you have to share either where you live or maybe the number of the energy contract. Uh, but then you get mainly the, the message uh, that money is saved uh, and you've improved your CO2 footprint as well. And for the latter, we think that uh, it's up to 20% CO2 reduction can be achieved with smart charging. So I think for the real EV drivers who think, well, I'm doing good because, uh, well, I'm not creating this footprint. You can even lower the footprint uh, with us if you uh, charge smart and not directly. I mean, you just mentioned um, there is uh, uh, you have some money saved. Uh, there could eventually also money to be made. Uh, obviously, going from V to V to home uh, to vehicle to grid. Um, have you got a date? Do you see this coming, or when do you see this coming? Well, I think in the end, if there you can already make money. It depends on what your baseline. So what we do now, we pay people for flexibility, and they just hold on to the energy contract they have. Those contracts can be cheaper, of course. Uh, if you net those costs, uh, there is upside and downside. Downside is your energy cost, the upside is the value of flexibility. Uh, really making just money, uh, yeah, I think to some extent the next decade uh, energy will cost money. Uh, but there are already moments in time where you earn a lot of money. So there's already negative energy prices on the wholesale markets. Uh, there's already very interesting uh, rewards from grid operators if you, if you either ramp up or ramp down uh, the number of vehicles charging. Uh, so I see it already now. Uh, discharging can add something here, uh, but obviously that needs some hardware uh, changes. First of all, not all vehicles are equipped yet. Uh, you need some extra infrastructure, which is not for free. So that business case might take another two years to really uh, ramp up it in a commercial way. But there are um, vehicles uh, equipped with jet lags already. You have quite powerful partners. Maybe you could uh, give us an overview and also say we are an industry medium, say uh, how somebody could become a partner or how, how they qualify. Uh, Jetlex now works with three published partners. Uh, first of all, we have a service for Teslas, which is Jetlex branded. Um, so we have a corporation there, uh, a partner we sell a license to for our service is Renault. They have ZD Smart Charge, which is a very interesting service. If you have ZD Smart Charge, it's an app from uh, Renault. It's, it's available in the Netherlands. For France, it will probably be part of the, the bigger Renault app. So you will find everything from Renault in one app, including a smart charging service. So if those people will find it with their OEM. Uh, and also we contribute to the digital charging services of BMW. Um, for some other non-disclosed OEMs, uh, we're there as well in pilots. 
Uh, yeah, and obviously we're open for every OEM. The thing we do, we integrate with the vehicle backend, we're the party behind the OEM. So you could see actually Jetlix as the tier one smart charging uh, service supplier to the automotive industry. And uh, when you say partners, are we talking Europe? Are we talking the world? I think these days vehicles and especially the connectivity in IT is designed and created for global purposes. And as we are actually IoT, we're independent of hardware. These smart charging services do not relate to uh, types of charging infrastructure or certain brands. It's global. So, if, for instance, a Tesla here is a Tesla in US. Uh, a Renault here is a Renault somewhere else in the globe. Um, so we don't see any, uh, any boundaries there, no. Do you see any particularly strong markets? I mean, the Netherlands, we're here in Amsterdam. Um... Yeah, for two reasons, there are stronger markets. There's markets with deeper value pools, for there is a lot of flexibility needed in the energy markets. You can make more money. Then we look to countries with a lot of wind energy, of course. So you can imagine UK can be strong, but even France with the nuclears, there's more and more wind coming up. Uh, I think uh, Norway less uh, is ch more challenging on that side, but on the other hand, there's local grids with, which have tra challenges. So I think that's an interesting perspective. Um, and people have to be, I think, very open to it up till now because it's a new service. So you see EV is new or e-mobility is new, then charging is something new, and then smart charging is the next level. So together with the OEMs, we are, I think, taking away those hurdles. We'll actually not differentiate markets if you're only asked what time are you leaving, and maybe we can read it in your digital planner, if you allow us to, but we see more and more people getting comfortable with those kind of services and the user consent and the opt-in, then, well, I think char smart charging as a default is quite near. We already sp speak with some OEMs who say, well, smart charging will default in the vehicle, and obviously you can opt out. So you can say, well, I don't like it, I turn off the service. And maybe some, some regulations or legislations will help us as well. We see more and more countries considering a kind of uh, smart charging, making it mandatory by law. Well, that will be a kind of game changer. Uh, and rumor has it that such things are happening in Korea and China, but already in UK to some extent as well. Uh, yeah, so fingers crossed that it gets uh, here uh, earlier than we expected. Fingers crossed indeed. Uh, let's stay with opting in. Thank you for talking to us. Um, we are here at the Revolution event by EVBox and this was the Electrive Studio. Thank you very much. Electrive Studio, powered by EVBox.